Hier soir, Congrès 2010 mettait en vedette la journaliste Céline Gallipo, qui nous dit pourquoi des nombreuses femmes du monde entier sont des otages de la violence et de la terreur dans les sociétés déchirées par la guerre. J'ai vu Céline Gallipo parler et elle était absolument incroyable. J'ai suivi depuis que j'ai 8 ans et j'ai eu la chance de la rencontrer aujourd'hui. Céline, la vie des Afghanes ne s'améliore absolument pas. Vous savez, les femmes ici ont vraiment deux visages. À Kaboul, les plus émancipées étudient, elles travaillent, elles siègent au Parlement, alors qu'ailleurs dans le pays, dans les campagnes surtout, qui sont plus pauvres, les mariages forcés, les viols, les violences conjugales sont le lot quotidien de la majorité des Afghanes. J'ai beaucoup aimé Mme Céline Gallipo, qui n'a pas besoin d'être présentée. Ce que j'ai aimé, c'est sa sensibilité face à la souffrance des femmes tout, tout autour du monde et aussi euh, sa détermination, tout en douceur, mais je pense que c'est une force tranquille qui, euh, qui est inspirante pour les femmes qui veulent se battre et, et, et prendre leur place dans la carrière de leur choix. La deuxième journée du Congrès accueillait aussi l'écrivaine Nancy Houston pour discuter l'impact de l'identité comme thème qui a déterminé sa vie. I loved the talk. I absolutely loved it. I found myself actually weeping at one or two points because I found it so moving and it spoke to me so deeply. Je suis une amoureuse de la littérature, de ce qu'elle et elle seule nous permet de créer et de transmettre en matière de nuances et de rêves, d'humour et de sagesse. Je suis une curieuse une insatiable, une boulimique d'histoire, indépendamment de la langue dans laquelle elles sont contées. She had talked about going to live in France and how she liked the identity of being a foreigner or a, a stranger and uh, that we learn humility or we become more humble when we become foreigners and have to speak a language that uh, is not our own and so on. I mean, she talked very, very movingly about that and I had similar experiences in my life, so it, it meant a lot to me. J'ai envie de louer des gens et ce qu'ils disent pas la langue dans laquelle ils le disent, serait-elle une langue française québécoisement, martiniquaisement ou ivoiriennement enrichie I enjoyed hearing his, uh, his take, his perspective on the past 20 years or so. I mean, he really was talking about the post-war period in Canada. And, and so when I hear people talking about, oh my goodness, we have to contain the ad nauseum discussion to hear about the level of the deficit, it, it's, it's nowhere near what it was at the end of the Second World War, I'll tell you. There, there's a, there, there was a, a capacity and imagination and drive in the post-war generation that I would suggest that we have to re-pick up on and analyze our own situation. I think the, the speaker's ideas were really interesting. I think it talks about some pretty good ideas about where education should be going. Um, there are some logistical issues that we have to keep in mind relative to budgets and job availability and that kind of thing. Many of the people that are here are academic people and we are the people who are training the teachers of tomorrow. So it's a good message for us to take back to those individuals. Earlier today, Congress delegates enjoyed the interactive multimedia playroom presented by Hexagram's Black Box. Visitors were presented with a thesaurus of sounds and images and encouraged to look at how individuals and communities interpret sound. When I first walked into the interactive media playroom, I was a little skeptical because I just saw some uh, plastic chains that appeared uh, hanging from the ceiling. But um, when I was immersed in the, in the project, I thought as a teacher, as a primary school teacher, that it would be really cool to kind of do something like this in the classroom. We have a barcode scanner and we have a lot of hand-holdable objects that have barcodes on them. What happens is that some of them trigger sounds. The blue ones trigger still images and the green ones trigger a silent video clip. People can place them according to how they see the whatever sound image or sound combination they have. I thought it was really interesting because I, I'm really into classical music and Mozart uh, and so I don't normally listen to anything except piano and symphonies. Uh, so it's interesting to think about sounds uh, out in the, the world or, or played on an instrument that I no wouldn't normally listen to and then try to classify them. Also on the agenda today, the FOFA Gallery presented Your Participation Not Required, 
an installation project that used lighting, music, and recorded soundscapes to explore the impact of interactive systems in a public space. In this space, the suggestion is that the phenomenon of light and sound actually change our perception of the space. This is a bit of a rare occurrence where we change the gallery space into more of an event space. This is something that's becoming more and more common, particularly here at Concordia, where we focus on research and creation. You can come into this space and experience its slightly shifting changes, the way the sound will move around the room, the way the light will slightly shift perceptibly, and start to have a brand new understanding of space. Be sure to check out the Espace Recherche events happening throughout Congress. Cloud Deck is a research web portal prototype where clouds of descriptors represent the connectedness of Concordia's community of researchers, featured on the third floor of the MB building. The process has been really fascinating because I, I come from outside the university from in a documentary and film background and we set up this installation. We'll be here uh, on GMSB on the third floor, Espace Recherche and uh, for people to play around with stuff. The Ticker Text Project blends the historical model of Thomas Edison's telegraphic stock ticker, which was invented in 1870, with the essence of 21st century digital telecommunications media like text messaging and Twitter. What's been amazing is discovering the amazing stories and people and, and, and the work that people are doing across the university through this project. So bringing together and highlighting those elements has been really almost in a journalistic kind of process of these gems to discover and to share with the world. Don't miss the book fair throughout Congress that brings scholarly works, fiction, and everything in between to Congress delegates from a vast array of publishers. Et pendant toute la durée du Congrès, vous pourrez voir à la Galerie Leonard et Bina Ellen une exposition intitulée Ignition, créée par les étudiants en maîtrise des beaux-arts. Les cinéphiles auront aussi le plaisir de visionner des films sur Montréal présentés tous les soirs du Congrès au cinéma de Sèvres.